what exactly is a less than lethal weapon? You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey everybody, Matt and I are back for the last episode where we dig a little bit deeper into things we examined in our series on vibrations and whether sound can be weaponized. Uh, we wanted to talk about a couple of things here. First, we wanted to talk about less than lethal weapons. A less than lethal weapon is exactly what the name implies. It could hurt you, but it's not designed to instantly kill you. It's, it's more designed to incapacitate a person, uh, whether it's a single individual or increasingly a crowd of people. So here are some other less than lethal weapons that have either been proposed or in research or are currently being used. In our episode on Monday, we mentioned the LRAD, the long range acoustic device that uses sound to repel people or to dispel crowds, whether those crowds are you know, a violent mob or peaceful protesters. This weapon or variants of this weapon uh, have been in use in Russia, uh, Israel, and the United States. Well, either in use or in research. But that's not all. There are some other things that don't rely on sound. One of the strangest, I think, is the LED flashlight. This is weaponized light. It was uh, being developed in 2007, and the idea was that by pointing this beam of light at people, you could make people disoriented and even nauseous. Now, this sounds like it's kind of space agey, right? It's a little bit weird. And uh, as far as we know, research is still ongoing on this device. There are a couple of drawbacks. First, this kind of thing only really works if you're looking at it. So if you suspect that somebody is using a weaponized flashlight on you, you know, look away. Not an expert, I'm just saying that seems like an easy answer. Uh, secondly, they found that heavily tented sunglasses might also uh, mitigate the effects of this beam. But of course, that is not the only less than lethal weapon around. There's also what's called the active denial system, which is the official name in the United States for what's more commonly known as the pain ray. This thing really is space age. It uses microwaves in order to agitate the skin, uh, so much so that you have a feeling of intense pain. And that's your nerves sensing the temperature rise, sensing the microwaves, and telling you, get out of here, you're burning alive. You're not actually burning alive. However, prolonged repeated exposure to this could cause some permanent damage and some intense discomfort. Let's go to something really crazy. This is something that was never, as far as we know, actively used, but it was proposed. The gay bomb. That's right. And this wasn't a recent thing, but the Department of Defense uh, legendarily, and this urban legend does happen to be true, uh, started proposing or conceptualizing some sort of bomb that could be dropped on people and through some chemical means make them homosexual. Now at the time, the very idea that someone would propose this uh, sort of speaks to the prejudice against homosexual people in that day and age. And as far as we could find, that bomb was never invented, but we think it serves as an interesting sort of benchmark to the kind of thinking that goes into these unorthodox weapons. And there's another point we should make here, a less than lethal weapon could still permanently damage somebody. Uh, for instance, a sonic weapon that someone was exposed to for too long could damage their eardrums permanently. And that's just the stuff we know about now. Who knows exactly what still exists and is classified? It's kind of like that scene in Indiana Jones where there's the warehouse filled with mysterious crates. We have no idea what is currently being researched. We really don't. We don't have the security clearance. Now, hopefully, uh, as we keep our eye on this, and as you keep your eye on this, we can talk to each other and figure out some of the newer developments because this is ongoing research. In five years, maybe in less than five years, we are going to see some unprecedented, unorthodox devices coming out of not just the United States military and other defense contractors, but of militaries around the world. 
next listener mail. Lewis wrote to us with uh, three ideas. His first idea was, could you guys please cover the Black Knight satellite? Now this was something new to us. We're digging into it now. And this was one of our favorite suggestions that Lewis made. Second, he asked us to cover a topic about the Bilderberg conference. Now Lewis, I think that we have already touched on this and we do like to keep our eyes on this conference, which is ongoing and does have quite a few powerful people getting together. Third, uh, Lewis asked if we could cover the recent UFO disclosure meeting in Canada. Now, UFO disclosure meetings aren't just a one-time thing. They do often happen. And what Matt and I like about this is that every time there's a little bit more new information uncovered. Lewis, you said that you enjoy the show and we just want to thank you for listening and even more for writing in. We've got another email here, uh, Dennis from Ottawa, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Dennis. Uh, you had some great questions for us about what is on YouTube and what's on iTunes because they don't always match. YouTube is going to be the best place to find our video content. That's where you're going to find our four episodes a week that we have right now. Now it's true that not all of these make it to iTunes. This vlog that you're watching is just for us on YouTube. This isn't something that the iTunes crowd ever gets a hold of. And one last thing, uh, Dennis, you cracked us up a little bit with your very last sentence on your email where you said something like, I'm 30, I don't really have time, I don't know if it's a good use of time to spend 10 hours a day watching YouTube. Uh, we get what you're saying and we are working on this. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for writing an email to us. Let's go to Twitter. We've made some new friends. All right, here's the worst joke I'm probably going to make this week. What up, dog? I'm sorry. I am so sorry to everybody. But that is a person named Dog on Twitter who wrote to us and said, could you cover the effects of wind turbines? Dog thinks this is very interesting, especially considering that the government is, as he says, making deals with companies like Samsung and GE. Well, Dog, this is interesting. We are going to dig into it, especially if uh, other listeners are also interested in hearing about this. This is a growing concern for a lot of people who are worried that wind turbines may have some sort of strange effect on weather patterns in a, in a larger context that we haven't yet grasped. And then Modern Day Escape wrote to us also on Twitter and said, hey, have you heard the story of a man and woman walking out of Lake Titicaca in the Machu Picchu Basin? And then we hadn't heard this story yet, but they clarified it a little bit by putting in all caps at the end of the message, aliens. So this is something that we also like to look into. We really enjoy stories and leads about unexplored or mysterious histories. So we're going to look into this and we're going to see what we can find out. Now for everybody else watching, uh, thank you so much for your time. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode and we hope that you will maybe leave a comment here if one of these listener suggestions really caught your ear or caught your eye since we're on video. Let us know. Uh, also feel free to drop us some new topic suggestions, uh, some anecdotes to add on to anything that we discussed here or about vibrations and uh, to the person who mentioned the Brown Elevator. There's a famous elevator at Brown University. Um, we're going to get to that too. I don't know if it's going to be in a blog or if it's going to be in a video, but I promise we're on the case because you're right, sir. That is very fascinating. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you again for watching. You can find us on Facebook. In the meantime, we're Conspiracy Stuff. You can drop us a line uh, at Twitter. We're Conspiracy Stuff. And you can always send us an email directly at conspiracy at discovery.com. What? Oh, yeah. And stay tuned for next week, starting Monday, when we cover the NSA, we cover PRISM, we cover Edward Snowden, and we ask the question, who's watching you right now?